just an African American population that's reading your paper, but everyone, everyone is reading it. Oh, well, I, I, you know, I, just the mere fact that every, anyone is reading it is, is great to me, but the fact that it, it has a very diverse audience means that uh, what we're doing it has a, uh, an appeal to more than just African Americans, and that, um, that makes me feel, feel good. I mean, um, it means that we're doing something that, that has a, a broad-based appeal, and that, that's very gratifying, very, very much so. As a publisher, what are your responsibilities? Cutting on the lights, cleaning the <laughs> floors. And, uh, no, uh, my, my job, my job is uh, we have an advertising department, we have uh, the journalism department, we have a business department, we have a circulation department, and we have people that run all of those departments. And my job is to run all of them. <laughs> so all, all of that group reports up to me, and it's my job to make sure, one, that those operations are running smoothly, that we uh, uh, connect with each other the way we should because each, each department depends on the other for its success and that, um, that internally we work as a team. And, and publishing is pretty much like being a coach. You aren't on the field necessarily doing all the playing, but uh, you have to make sure that what's being taken care of is the mission of the publication and that it's going in the, in the direction that, that you want to go in. So I, my job is to set the vision that, that we're trying to reach and, and to make sure we're gonna make money and then to give the direction to the, to the staff to say, here's how we're gonna make that happen and let them go do it. And, it's, and they're very good at, at going and doing it. And so I don't have to sit there and, and oversee everything that they do, but uh, I do have to set the vision and the direction. Another thing that most people, most people don't know is that the Charlotte Post is only, we have a sister publication in the Raleigh-Durham area Correct. that does exactly the same, same thing. And um, we have a sol satellite office up there that produces that paper, even though we actually print it and, and uh, do all of the, the production side in Charlotte. They have an office up there that uh, basically does the same thing and, and uh, as good as the Post in that market. And so I'm very proud of, of, of that as well. I know you have a lot of great interesting articles in the Post, but I see a lot of advertisement. Why is it so vital that businesses advertise their business? Well, it's, it's two-sided. Uh, one, the if we don't have advertisers, we don't have the Charlotte Post. And so it's, uh, uh, the advertising pays the bills for us. Mm -hmm. And so it's very critical that, that we can uh, get strong advertisers to come into the publication. And we have to make the case that advertising in the Charlotte Post is to the benefit of that business because our readership, um, will buy and use your products if you um, uh, advertise with us. And, uh, and so that's a, well, you asked about the, the, the diversity of our readership. Well, w one of the things that helps with advertising is diversity of readership. I mean, you have to, you have to make the point that what you're producing uh, has the interest of more than just African Americans, is that it's uh, community-wide uh, uh, importance for of the publication to be there. And doing that helps you sell advertising. And, and then advertisers will start believing in the fact that you can not deliver what you are promising. And, and we do, we, uh, we can deliver eyeballs to their ads, which ultimately will cause people to go buy their products and services. But the, the, the other side of that, we, we, don't, we don't have nearly enough ads. I mean, we have a, we have a good base of advertising, but we need, we need to grow that. And that's one of the things that we're concentrating on heavily. Um, we have expanded, we spent a lot of money expanding now into uh, um, every county in both markets. We're in uh, every county that's close to the 95 corridor going from here up through the Raleigh-Durham area. And so uh, we are very widespread and um, from the printed side, we're, we're doing a, a great job in exposing the publication. But on the internet, on the technical side, we're doing an even better job of getting exposed uh, to readers simply because um, 
the World Wide Web allows you to reach a lot of people very easily. And so we're, we're, um, we're expanding our, our visibility. As a business owner, why should I expect that by having my business as an advertisement in your paper, why should I expect it not to happen overnight, but to take some time? Because I'm, I'm hoping that by putting that thing, in, that ad in your paper, it's going to happen tomorrow, and I'm going to get this crowd of people to come in. But you're going to be kicking your door down because you're having that. I mean, I mean no, that's that's no. that's what a no, lot of business I, is. I, you are exactly right, and that's that's uh, a big headache. But when you advertise, you 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 are, you are buying equity, uh, and I can tell you some great stories about that. You, you're literally buying equity. Nobody's going to go necessarily come in and kick your door down the, because you advertised uh, in the post and they saw your ad Thursday, they're going to come and kick your door down. Because uh, you have to realize that everybody might not need your service or your product when they see it. But uh, to, to make this more clear, I had uh, an advertiser who had the same problem. They advertised for about three weeks. Um, never had anybody knock on their door or call them and so they thought the ad wasn't working and so they um, stopped advertising. A month later we started getting calls and then the calls were coming to us because the ad wasn't in the paper anymore and people were saying you know uh, there, the, I needed it I'm not going to if I mention the service you, you might know who it was but we, we need that service now and uh, I went to your newspaper because that's where I saw the ad for a couple of weeks and now I need the service but I don't see the ad, what happened? So well, she's not advertising with us anymore and she said, well, I need the service, can you give me the number? Now the, the, the ugly side of me would have said, well, she's not advertising, no, I'm not giving you the number. Right. But I gave the number anyway to the people calling. And so, but, but when you advertise, you aren't, you're building equity in, in your product and your service so that people can see what you're doing, they can see it continuously, and then uh, when they need your product or service, they will go, they'll know where to go and get it because they, they've seen your advertising. Um, and, and nobody asked Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola or, or the, the mobile phone companies, any of those people, that question because they are always advertising. You, you won't miss a day where you won't see major company advertising um, everywhere. Right. And, and, and the reason for that is that they're building equity and, and, and recognition of, of their products and services and that's what it requires. African American businesses make one major mistake when they're going through starting off. Um, they, never, they never put in their business plan a large enough marketing budget to sustain what they're trying to do. And, and we, we see that over and over again that marketing is, is not considered a necessity when they're putting together business plans. And ultimately when they start off a business without marketing being a part of the business plan, you have no way to expose the fact that you are coming on board or what you're doing. And without that marketing budget, you, you're going to hurt. You're gonna hurt. Uh, and so that's a great question and it's, uh, yeah, you're building equity. Correct. So it's safe to say that as a business owner, I should invest long term in advertising because that, just like you said, it will benefit my business into the growth of it as far as people being able to see it. If you if you want to be a long term business, yes, uh, you have to. I mean, it's not it's not even a question of should you you have to because it's the only way you're going to uh, be able to sustain yourself and have people know uh, that you're out there and what you're doing. And that's yeah, you have to do that. It's critical. What are some of the um, events that Charlotte Post sponsors? I thought you'd never ask. Uh, <laughs> Come on, sir. I mean. <laughs> no, we um, we have a foundation as well, and uh, our foundation uh, raises money for um, initiatives that we put on for for young kids that are performing well below grade level, uh, because it's the number one reason for dropout rates by the ninth grade, and and we try to get these young kids uh, at an early age and get them at grade level so that we can have a, a impact on uh, the dropout rate. Every year we have um, a post-best banquet 
that we honor um, the, an educator, we honor a luminary who this year is going to be Senator Charlie Danley, who is a longtime um, community uh, servant for a lot of different reasons, educator as well as a senator uh, and city councilman, and uh, two top seniors of the year. And uh, this event, uh, this year is April the 12th at the Hilton downtown. Um, and uh, the proceeds will go back to the foundation. Um, but this is our major, major event annually that we do. How does it feel for you as far as Charlotte Post Foundation to be given back to our community, to our youth in our community? Um, it makes me feel very proud that we are able to, to, to give back and give back in a positive way that's going to have um, what we feel is a tremendous impact on, uh, on this community uh, because it's an investment in our youth and that's an investment in the future of this community. And um, the selfish side of, of me is the literacy is the major reason that these kids are dropping out and uh, without the ability to read you're killing my business because we require readers, people to be able to read to, to help us uh, in the newspaper business. If you can't read, you can't read our publication. But it, it makes me feel very good to know that um, we can, can make that kind of difference in this community. Being a Charlotte native, how much have you seen Charlotte grown? And how do you see us getting better, bigger and better? Oh, I, I, I grew up in Charlotte when it was a little hick town and a um, nice little hick town, but it was very segregated at the time. And um, I've seen it grow from being a very segregated town to a very inclusive city that uh, is booming. Um, and it's, um, it's a great place to live. and. Um, we have every major amenity that a, a growing city needs. Um, we have to, sorry, sir, we have to wind it up. I, I, no, I, I no, went, no. I don't know where the time went. I don't know where the time went at. I mean, and hopefully I, I can get you to come back to, to talk some more to our community. Anytime, uh, anytime. You, I enjoyed your program. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Mr. <laughs> Gerald Johnson, the CEO publisher of the Charlotte Post. Get involved and, and read up on that on this paper because it's an outstanding paper that we have in our area. You be encouraged. Thank you. Find out what the interests of people are and try to balance them because that's what legislation should be all about. What you have to look at is how the light rail has transformed Charlotte. We always want to be out front showing what can be done. We govern best when more people have a voice. Thank you for watching the show. You be encouraged.